Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at, a, at some information sent to me by an Augie that had reference to the third question, the third and final question in the September 22 um, QST in the Ask Dave column. In this column, I addressed uh, balloons, ripple, and uh, pacemakers. And the thing he wanted to address was pacemakers, which is this one down here. Okay, and in there I talk about taking a look at the manufacturing handbook. Uh, this email came from Alan Falkoff, who is a retired professional engineer, and he's K3YZ. And he sent me this very complete uh, manual from Medtronics that talks about various external electrical forces that can react with an installed pacemaker. And so I just wanted to flip through this. This is not the right numbers for every pacemaker ever built, but it does <clears throat> give us an idea of the kinds of things that will affect a pacemaker. Specifically, there is a section at the back that talks about radio transmitters and how far you have to stay away from them. Interestingly, it's not that far. Uh, they talk in, in many terms in here about inches rather than feet or meters or miles or anything. So let's just take a quick flip through this and see what we've got. This is medical procedures and EMI warnings and precautions for the use of the pacemaker and it covers lots of things. Um, for example, ablation is a procedure that can be done on the heart uh, when there are problems with atrial fibrillation. I know somebody who just went through that, and it, it gives restrictions on that. That's actually doing an electrical procedure. Ablation means to take away or burn away or remove uh, by the application of an external force. This is what happens to spacecraft when they re-enter the atmosphere. The part that's turned toward the front is um, a heat shield and it carries the heat away literally by ablating the heat shield and by the time the heat shield gets down to the ground a lot of it's gone. Endoscopies, dental procedures, diagnostic radiology, ultrasounds, diathermy. Now diathermy uses sometimes um, HF waves to heat certain parts of the body. There's something to be aware of. Electrolysis, something that can be done Here's electrosurgery, external defibrillation, and cardioversion. This is what the pacemaker actually does in the event of an emergency. So you've got two systems kind of working against each other, and it's got very specific procedures there. Hyperbaric therapy, which is to put someone in air or oxygen at a higher pressure than is normal. Uh, lithotripsy is a procedure that uses a mechanical shockwave to break up a kidney stone. Um, and magnetic resonance imaging, there's two kinds here. Those that are safe if you take certain precautions and those you shouldn't use at all. Because remember, you've got leads going from the pacemaker to the heart to manage the beating of the heart. Those are wires. In the presence of these strong magnetic fields, you can induce very high voltages in those wires. Radiotherapy used for cancer, things like that. Stereotaxis is a catheter navigation platform using clinicians to steer catheter-based diagnostic throughout the body using magnetic navigation. Again, a varying magnet creates a current in an electric wire. Transcutaneous electrical nerve simulation, transurethral needle ablation. Oh, that sounds like it hurts. Um, okay, precautions regarding electromagnetic interference. Now, here are some uh, general guidelines. Pause for a moment here while I get the page turned. General EMI, that's electromagnetic interference guidelines for patients. There are area restrictions. Consult with the doctor about going into areas where there are signs posted 
prohibiting persons uh, from going in. Now, if you're going into a home, there probably aren't any signs. So talk to your doctor beforehand. Symptoms of EMI. This is what can happen to you if you are in an electromagnetic field and it's too high. Uh, the device starts to malfunction. You become dizzy or feel rapid or irregular heartbeats while using an electrical item. Release whatever you are touching and move away from it. The cardiac device should immediately return to normal operation. If symptoms do not improve when you move away from the device, consult with your doctor. If you have an implanted device and you receive a therapy shock while using an electrical item, release the item or move away from it. Now, here's very important, proper grounding of electrical items. Your shack should be properly grounded. If you've just gotten into ham radio and you've shut up a bare bones if you've just gotten into ham radio and you've set up a bare bones station, move immediately to bring in proper grounding. <clears throat> to avoid interference, things should be grounded. All electrical items are properly wired and grounded, supply lines, swimming pools, hot tubs, and so on. Now let's look at some of the wireless communications devices. Okay, to avoid interference, keep the following items at least six inches away from your cardiac device. Now, your cardiac device is implanted in your chest, um, and so a cordless telephone would probably be more than six inches away. A laptop, a tablet, computer, all of these things like this need to be kept away, six inches away. Headsets, headphones, and earbuds remote keyless entry and remote car starter devices, hold them out away from you. Remote control or radio controlled toys, again, a lot of people will put the control, put the controller right on their chest while they're controlling a drone or something like that. So move it away from you like this, okay? Because if you have it right here, it's right next to where your device is and you're breaking the uh, six inch rule. Okay, to avoid interference, do not carry a wireless device in a pocket over the cardiac device or in a shoulder bag near it. Now, magnets in these wireless communications devices can interfere. So put these things in your pocket. Uh, okay, mobile telephones. Six inches away from the driver. Don't put this in a pocket right next to your heart. Household and hobby items with motors and magnets, again, six inches away. This includes handheld kitchen appliances, such as mixers, sewing machines, and sergers. Surging is a way of sewing. <clears throat> Personal care items, such as handheld hair dryers, electric shavers. I hope none of you are shaving your chest. That would be interesting. Electric or ultrasonic tooth uh, brushes. Uh, items that contain magnets, such as bingo wands, m mechanics extractor wands. These are magnetized screwdrivers, things like that. Boat motors, electronic body fat scale runs electricity. Uh, now here's something, electronic pet fences are invisible fences. Stay at least six inches away from them. Recreational, and now note, you don't want to go around touching electric fences either because you can get quite a shock out of those. Recreational handheld metal detectors keep 24 inches away from the detector end because those things use powerful magnets. Home use electric kills for uh, doing pottery and so on, 24 inches away. Inductive cooktops, okay, 24 inches away. Uh, magnetic mattress pads or pillow why anybody would do that, I don't know, but don't let them within six inches. Portable electric generators up to 20 kilowatts. Keep 12 inches away. Uninterruptible power supplies. You can see these with your computer. Keep it 12 inches away. Home power tools. It goes on through this industrial equipment. Now we're down to radio transmitters here. Determine a safe distance between the antenna of a radio transmitter in the cardiac device depends on many factors, such as transmitter power, frequency, and the antenna type. Okay. 
If the power is high or if the antenna cannot be directed away from a cardiac device, you may need to stay further away from the antenna. Here are some what they call guidelines. Two-way radio transmitter less than three watts. Keep the cardiac device at least six, in, six inches away. Now, if you're going to use a handheld device and you put it up, often people hold them in front of them like this. You might pick up uh, one of these and hold it like this. Okay, the distance between here and your cardiac device is uh, not very uh, is not very far away. Okay, you need to keep it further away or up or something like that. Now, if you now there are people who to avoid electromagnetic radiation to their brain instead of using a handheld like this note the distance again from the antenna down to here is a little iffy I have seen people hold them um, upside down usually with their other hand like this now this is great for electromagnetic interference because it keeps it away from the brain and puts it into your your chest however look how close you are to that cardiac device Okay, right here, keep the antenna up and away. Okay, you can actually point it away from your body so that the radiation goes to the side and over you and down uh, when you talk on the radio. Okay, and that will help uh, quite a bit, but you, you need to be careful with these things. Don't do what the pros do and turn it upside down. Uh, in this, you know, most people think that their brain is more important than their chest, and I guess that's true. Uh, you can live without a lung, but you can't live without a brain, although some people seem to, but that's another story. Um, so be careful with the handhelds, okay? And a lot of these handhelds put out more than three watts. They'll put out five or ten. Keep your handheld on low power. You know, portable transmitters, Keep at least 12 inches away from the antenna. Commercial and government vehicle mounted antennas, by the way, that does include us. Okay, keep the cardiac device at least 24 inches away from the antenna. If you've got a metal roof, you're fine. You've got a mag mount on the roof. If you've got, like my Jeep, a plastic roof that's designed to unhook and come off, um, and you've got something up there, you need something to shield yourself from that. Other transmitters, now notice the power levels. 125 is a normal amateur radio station. To 250, we're getting to the larger non-amplified stations. Stay at least nine feet away from the antenna. Notice that's the antenna, not the radio. My antennas are all, all further. For transmitters with power levels higher than 250 watts, avoid restricted areas containing the antennas. Avoid them entirely, okay? <clears throat> so if you're going to go over to a friend's shack or in your own shack or something, and you've got a 250 watt uh, or 500 watt or 1500 watt antenna uh, or amplifier, you want to keep the antenna quite far away from uh, the house, okay? I would recommend just from reading something like this, if you have a Medtronic, this is a Medtronic, if you have the Medtronic or any uh, heart uh, device, pacemaker, um, that you just stay below 250 watts. Use your 100 watt radio, okay? What's more important? Um, so what's more important, making a QSO and hurting your heart? I don't think so. Remember, ham radio is a hobby, and your heart is life and death. So follow these guidelines, and you can actually pretty much operate normal amateur radio with a couple of little exceptions, uh, like the handheld. Don't get the thing right down here next to it. Keep it a few inches away. Operate on low power, 3 to 5 watts on these things, okay, because the antenna is just too close. Okay, if it's a fancy one that boasts 10 watts out, turn the power down. Get it down to 5 or 3 watts or even 2 watts. 
If you need to hit a repeater, get an external antenna, okay? Now, if you have a vertical antenna, which is common for FM at VHF and UHF, um, the signal is going to radiate out, not up and down. So if you get that up on the roof above you, um, you'll be in good shape and you can run your 50 watt radio or whatever it is that, uh, that you have. So there is a little more specific guidance on what it takes to uh, wear um, a pacemaker and how you use them around ham radio. I would like to say a special thank you to Carwood Bear, who is a patron via Patreon and is supporting this channel financially. Uh, you also can do that by going to patreon.com slash KE0OG and signing up for whatever seems right to you. Uh, this all helps provide channel funds. The channel funds are used for like paying my assistant, camera equipment and so on, other hobby things they try to bring a little bit of to you and to keep the, the channel going. So, uh, and by the way, all that money that comes in is taxable. It's income. I don't pocket any of this without paying taxes on it. It's all properly taxed. So, um, also please like and subscribe. Share this with your friends. Tell other people about this channel. And until we next meet, 73.